In this video, we'll study about the IC555 timer. It can be used as a multivibrator, frequency divider, tone generator etc. with the use of appropriate external circuitry. It's available in many forms but we will focus on the 8-pin dual inline package version. This is the pin diagram of the IC. The pins of the IC are as follows. To understand the functionality of these pins properly, we need to take a look at the internal block diagram of the IC. This is how the internal block diagram of the IC looks like. First it contains a voltage divider circuit. This is followed by a block of comparators. This is connected to a flip-flop. We also have a discharge circuit. Finally, we have the output buffer. The functions of all of these blocks will be clear by the end of this video. We'll first see the pins 1, 3 and 8 as they are the most straightforward ones. Pin 1 is the ground pin. Pin 8 is the VCC pin, used for power supply. Pin 3 is the pin from which we take our output. Let's see the voltage divider block first. We have three resistors of value R, lined up from VCC to ground. As the comparators are op-amp based, no current flows through their input. Hence, we can use voltage division between these resistors directly. Using voltage division, we get Vx as R plus R upon, R plus R plus R, into VCC, which is 2 by 3 VCC. Similarly, the voltage Vy will be R upon, R plus R plus R, into VCC, which is 1 by 3 VCC. Vx is given as a reference to the first comparator and Vy is given as reference to the second comparator. The other inputs of the comparators are from pin 2 and pin 6. Pin 2 is known as the trigger pin and pin 6 is known as the threshold pin. Hence, we use pin 2 and pin 6 as inputs to the IC555 timer. We can vary the output of the comparators by varying the voltage levels at pin 2 and pin 6. If you see comparator 1, Vx is given to the inverting input. Hence, whenever the voltage at the threshold pin goes above Vx, that is 2 by 3 Vcc, the output of the comparator, V1 will go high, which is digital 1. For comparator 2, Vy is given to the non-inverting terminal. Hence, the output of comparator 2, V2 will be high, or digital 1, when the voltage at the trigger pin goes below 1 by 3 Vcc. The output of the comparators is given to the RS flip-flop. Before we see its use here, let's take a look at the truth table of the RS flip-flop. If both the inputs are zero, then the output of the flip-flop will not change, that is, it retains its previous state. If S is zero and R is one, then the output will be low, irrespective of the previous state. Similarly, if S is 1 and R is 0, then the output will be high. Both inputs being high forces the RS flip-flop to a forbidden state, which is something we want to avoid. Now let's see the effect of the comparator outputs on the RS flip-flop. Consider for example that the voltage at the trigger pin is above 1 by 3 VCC, and the voltage at threshold pin is below 2 by 3 VCC. The output of comparator 2 will be low, meaning input S will be low. Similarly, the output of comparator 1 will be low meaning input R will be low. Hence, the RS flip-flop will retain its state. The RS flip-flop output can be either 1 or 0. That means, without any external circuitry, the flip-flop will retain its state, either 1 or 0 indefinitely, or in other words, the IC555 timer acts as a bistable multivibrator. Now suppose the threshold voltage goes above 2 by 3 VCC. The output of comparator 1 will be high and the input R will be high. This leads the flip-flop output to go low. This makes the output of the timer low. Hence, by controlling the voltage at the threshold pin, we are controlling the output voltage of the IC555 timer. 
Now suppose the threshold voltage goes below 2 by 3 VCC, and the trigger voltage goes below 1 by 3 VCC. Then we have output of comparator 1 low, and 2 high. That means the inputs of the flip-flop are, R equals 0 and S equals 1. Hence, the output of the flip-flop and hence the output of the timer will be high. Thus, by controlling the trigger and threshold voltage, we control the output of the timer. Usually, we control the voltages at these two terminals by adding external resistors and capacitors. The external resistors and capacitors are charged via the supply voltage VCC. We choose appropriate time constants for the outside circuits and hence we gain some kind of control over these pins. This in turn means we're controlling the output of the timer based on the external circuit. This can be used to generate signals of our choice. Usually pin 2 and pin 6 are shorted and hence, the outputs of the comparators can never be simultaneously one. If they are not tied together, we need to manually ensure that the RS flip-flop does not enter a forbidden state. There is one more pin which we can use to control the timings. The pin number 5 is known as the control pin. It is directly connected to the inverting terminal of comparator 1. Usually, the input at this node would be 2 by 3 VCC. However, we can override that and set a voltage of our choice by applying a voltage at the control pin. Using this, we can change our timing signals. As mentioned before, we usually connect external resistors and capacitors to help generate our timing signals. The discharge block helps in this process. The external capacitances are generally connected to pin 7, the discharge pin of the IC555 timer. Suppose the output of the IC is 0 volts. That means Q bar will be high. Hence, the base of the transistor will be at a high voltage, leading the transistor to act as a closed switch. So, if a capacitor is connected to this transistor, the capacitor will discharge via a very low impedance of the transistor, effectively a short circuit. On the other hand, if the output is high, Q bar will be low, meaning the base of the transistor is at low voltage. Hence, the transistor will act as an open switch and the capacitor will see a very high impedance. The last pin is pin 4, which is the reset pin. It is an active low pin. If activated, the flip-flop output is reset irrespective of the outputs of the comparators. If we do not wish to keep the flip-flop in reset state, we need to keep the reset pin tied to VCC. That's all for this video. In the next few videos, we'll see how this timer can actually be used to generate some useful waveforms. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.